Richard Miles says you're denying, or, or some members of the party room are denying the science of climate change, are you? No, no, I'm not, uh, Peter. But, uh, um, uh, look, uh, the, the, this IPCC body, uh, I've got no respect for them. They're the super chicken little of the political world. Uh, the sky is always falling in, except it never does. They've been saying for 50 years that we've got 10 years to save the planet and they're constantly wrong. How can they have any credibility left? And now, the way they've managed this latest report, they've leaked it out like some dodgy PR firm. If, they, if this was about science, just release the report, right? But all we've seen is this drip feed of fear porn over the weekend, trying to scare the bejesus out of people, rather than just tell us the science, tell us what's actually happening. Uh, well, so, well, there's 195 scientists and, and government reps who are, who are part of the report. Are they all wrong? Uh, well, what's the situation here is, uh, Peter, is when you look into the report, they, they are absolutely wrong with a lot of their baseline scenarios. So the IPCC's baseline scenarios has coal use in the next couple of decades being double, more than double, in fact, of what the International Energy Agency predicts. Now, uh, now I love coal, uh, Peter, and I'd love to see coal demand uh, grow by more than double than the IEA predicts, but that's just loopy stuff. It really is loopy stuff. So that's how you get... So that's how they generate the one-and-a-half degree Celsius increase by 2040 is because they have unrealistic assumptions about the increase in, in, in coal use and therefore carbon dioxide uh, uh, emissions. But so either some experts are wrong, right? So you've got, you've got the IPCC saying it's going to grow by this much up here and the International Energy Agency is only going to grow by this much. Uh, I think the IPC forecasts are way out of whack with any forecasters. And they completely undermine the whole idea. The whole idea is that we've had all these clean energy te technology breakthroughs and coal is dead, I thought. So why is it growing in their baseline scenario so much? It, that is unrealistic. Will the Nats commit to net zero by 2050? Uh, well, look, that's, I'm not a spokesperson for the Nationals, uh, so I, I, I can't um, say that yeah. one way or another. All I can say is I won't be supporting a net zero emissions target, uh, uh, mainly because it will be ineffective. Mm. Uh, it'll be ineffective, as we've seen the last few weeks, China, India and lots of other developing countries, Russia, uh, refusing to sign up to it. So that and means you could be outnumbered? To it. Oh, I, look, I, I don't make predictions about that because I'm not going to... I'm not going to uh, prejudge my, the opinions of my colleagues. That's for them to come to conclusions. Um, the, uh, all I know is that to this date, uh, the Nationalist Party has uh, not agreed uh, to such a target. Uh, there has not been significant support with the Nationalist Party room for so such a target. So what will it take? But we're not... Well, well, yeah, well Peter, I, as I say, as an individual, I can't yeah. answer that. Question on but but, you, but of you're with the party. You, you me, represent the party. You're me, one of the senior members of the no, party. No, I don't. I don't. No, that's not true. That's not true. I don't. I'm not. I'm, I'm a senator, and I, uh, um, I, I, I have my own views that I represent strongly in favour of the state of Queensland that I represent. But I'm not a spokesperson for the party, and I'm not going to uh, try to prejudge the views of my colleagues. All I will say is I won't be supporting the target because. Because if we were to sign up to it, all we would do is hamstring our own industry and send Australian jobs overseas. Because other countries aren't going to do it. India is not going to uh, not going to China. put at risk their economic growth and development. China definitely is not. We can't trust China. We can't trust them on the virus. We can't trust trust them on climate. And so why would we sign up to an agreement which, which would just let China steal? thousands of more Australian jobs, as they've been doing for 20 years, as we couldn't trust them on trade. So uh, it, it just makes... This is just a non-starter. This whole thing is a complete dead end uh, that is not going to deliver any benefit for the environment, even if you do believe in the super chicken little uh, projections of the IPCC. Net zero emissions still won't tackle or deal with that issue because China cannot be trusted. Mm. All right, Matt, we're going to leave it there. Good to chat, though. Thanks very much, Peter. No worries, <laughs> mate. We'll talk to you soon.